Hello everybody. Today, I would like to talk about one of the most dangerous gangsters I've ever read about. The gangster I am referring to is of course John A. Light. A. Light was one of the toughest, if not the toughest wise guy around in the mid-1980s to 1990s. It is alleged that A. Light killed six people, shot dozens more, and had piped or baseball batted over a hundred people. A. Light was the primary enforcer for the Gambino family, and although he was not Italian, he nevertheless was one of John Gotti's right-hand men. A. Light was so tough that most wise guys would cross the street when A. Light walked by. When he was on the streets, a Light was the muscle behind the Gambino family. When John Gotti or John Gotti Jr. wanted something done, they called on John A Light to take care of the problem. And A Light would always end up taking care of the problem. A Light's signature choice of weapon was a baseball bat, which he would use to inflict crippling damage on those who dared defy the Gottis. By A Light's own account, while he was not a bully, he was still a madman during that time and could be incredibly dangerous when he needed to be. As A. Light said in the book Gotti's Rules by George Anastasia, one of the reasons John Gotti wanted me around his son was that I knew the streets. I knew Junior had a bunch of wannabes around him and the father knew that too. He saw me as somebody who was different. I wasn't afraid of anything or anybody and I'd do anything. He liked that. So Gotti had A. Light school Gotti Jr. on how to conduct himself on the streets. A. Light taught him how to be a gangster. He taught him Cosa Nostra. A. Light was so important to the Gambino family that Gotti Jr. made A. Light his second in command upon being inducted into the family. To quote Gotti's rules once again, at a meeting in late 1987, at the Our Friends Social Club, Junior told everyone that from that point on, they had to go through a light, that whatever they wanted to say to him, they should say it to a light. For a long time, a light was the muscle, and he was the brains behind large segments of the Gambino organization. Many did not make a move unless a light okayed it first. There are many stories that exemplify just how tough and dangerous John A. Light was. And in this video, I will be sharing a few of those stories. All of these stories, and much more, are featured in the book A. Light and Anastasia wrote called Gotti's Rules. So anyone who doubts just how dangerous A. Light was, should pick that book up and read it for yourselves. The first story, which showed A. Light's toughness, was when A. Light took on a well-known tough guy named Gene Foster, along with seven of his men all by himself. A. Light took them on all by himself. To quote Gotti's rules, Foster approached A. Light and said, You John A. Light? A. Light said he was. I'm Gene Foster. I heard you are looking for me. With that, A. Light said he dropped the folding beach chair and cracked Foster over the head with the metal pipe. Foster went down, and A. Light continued to pound him. A. Light said he faced off six or seven guys who had come to Foster's aid. Later, when A. Light was finished pounding Gene Foster, a big guy in the crowd urged everyone to go after A. Light. A. Light then pulled a derringer and pointed it at him. That's not even a real gun, the guy said. You want to find out? A. Light asked. You'll be the first one I shoot. And with that, the crowd backed off. That just showed how tough A. Light was. He took on seven guys all by himself. He never backed down from anyone. The second story involved A. Light taking on three guys all by himself in a nightclub in Brooklyn. A. Light's friend, Joe O'Kane, was getting hassled by three guys in the club and O'Kane called A. Light to help him out. A. Light arrived at the club shortly after, 
and to quote Gadi's rules again. Elite walked up to him and over the noise and music asked, You got a problem with my friend? The guy told Elite to fuck off, so Elite pulled out a gun and shot him in the hip. When he went down, Elite kicked him in the face. Then, Elite calmly walked out of the bar and headed toward his car when he heard footsteps. He turned around and saw two other guys coming for him. He couldn't believe it. I said to the one kid, What are you fucking crazy? Then I shot him. He went down and the other kid took off. Again, another clear example of just how tough and brutal Elite was. He took three guys at the club, all by himself, shot two of them without even hesitating. Elite was crazy in those days, a very tough, brutal gangster. The third story involved Elite taking on an entire biker gang all by himself. According to Gotti's rules, one night Elite received a call from his friend Joey Mathis, who said that three bikers were causing problems in his bar. Without even thinking, Elite got dressed, grabbed a baseball bat, and went straight to Mathis' bar. To quote directly from Gotti's rules, I go into the bar and tell Joey Mathis, Come on, we're going home, Elite said. When we walked out of the bar, the bikers are there. One of them tells me, Mind your business, this has got nothing to do with you. Elite hit him in the head with the bat, knocking him out cold. A few days later, Elite learned that a dozen more bikers were at Mathis' bar and were looking for him. Elite went straight to the bar with a gun and a knife and approached the leader of the biker gang a guy by the name of Brian. Elite went straight over to him, and according to Gotti's rules, said, I heard you got a problem with me, Elite said. Who are you? asked the biker. John Elite, I heard you were looking for me. As the girl moved away, Elite pulled out his knife and jammed it into the biker's thigh. Now you found me, he said. Look for me again, and I'll kill you. Again, this is another clear example of just how fearless Elite was, that he would walk into a bar filled with a dozen bikers, go straight to the leader, stab him in the thigh, and threaten to kill him right in front of all of his men. I never heard any gangster doing such thing. Not Sammy Gravano, not Anthony Castle, not Greg Scarpa, no one, but Elite would do something like this. Elite was as tough as they come on the streets. Elite had balls. The fourth story, in my opinion, really shows just how crazy Elite was during this time. According to Gotti's rules, one day in a bar that was owned by two New York City cops, Elite walked in, wearing a suit and tie and a scarf. Two guys in the bar began making fun of the way Elite was dressed, calling him a pretty boy, and flicked his scarf up in Elite's face. To quote directly from the book, Elite didn't even think. He just reacted. He punched the first guy in the jaw, knocking him out, and then turned on the other guy, pummeling him to the ground. A friend of theirs, whom Elite also knew, tried to intervene and calm him down. What are you doing, John? the guy screamed. Elite pulled out a gun and shot him in the chest. It was senseless. I must tell you, I read a lot of stories about a lot of brutal wise guys. Nothing I read ever comes close to the utter brutality Elite exhibited in this situation. Elite would later explain how he even shot his own cousin. Elite had given his cousin Nicky $60,000 to bribe a police officer. When Elite learned that his cousin had actually pocketed the money, Elite went to him and demanded he pay the cop the money. To quote directly from Gotti's rules, He got fresh with me. Elite said. His wife was telling him to watch how he spoke, but he kept getting in my face. I had a gun, and I pistol whipped him, hit him in the head a few times, but he wouldn't stop. So Elite shot his cousin in the hip and in the leg, which later had to be amputated. Elite didn't try to sugarcoat any of it. This was who he was, he told the jury, and that was why the Gaudis had him around. The fifth story that shows just how crazy and dangerous Elite was, was when he tortured a contractor he had hired. Elite had hired the contractor to do some work on his house while he was on a honeymoon in Hawaii with his new wife. However, Elite quickly learned 
that the contractor was using Alight's bed to have sex with his girlfriend. Alight was infuriated, and when he came back home and saw that none of the work on his house had been done either, he went crazy. To quote Gotti's rules again, I told him, you think you were going to make an asshole out of me? I'm going to make an asshole out of you. With that, Alight stripped the contractor, beat him with a pipe, broke his ribs, his jaw, and arm, and then threw him in a small lake that was on the property. I had a gun and kept shooting at him, Alight said. I wouldn't let him out of the water. It was like 30 degrees out. After that, Alight locked the contractor in his garage naked while Alight went out to dinner. I went out to dinner, Alight said. I left him there, but I forgot about a back window. He apparently got loose, climbed out the window, and ran naked through the woods. The cops found him in the on Route 73. Again, I never heard of any wise guy doing anything like this. This was an act of utter madness. Only someone as crazy and as dangerous as Alight would do something as heinous as this. Alight was a very dangerous gangster. The sixth story that showed just how dangerous Alight was was when he murdered Georgie Grasso. Georgie Grasso was a drug dealer and Gambino associate. Apparently, the Gottis were angry that Grasso kept using the Gottis' name during his drug deals, and for that reason, Gotti Jr. wanted him dead. He gave Alight the contract to kill Grasso because he knew Alight would get the job done. Alight lured Grasso to a local bar and got him drunk. When they left, Alight, Grasso, and Phil Baroni got into a crash car and started driving down the Grand Central Parkway. Alight sat behind Grasso. To quote Gotti's rules, they slowed off an exit at Jewel Avenue, and that's where Alight pulled out his gun and pumped three bullets into the back of Grasso's head. Then he spit on him, calling him a son of a bitch and a cocksucker. Then they all drove to Esquire Diner in Queens and had something to eat. Alight still remembers what he ordered that night. A cheeseburger with extra cheese, he said. That's what I always got, and a Coke. This pretty much encapsulates just how cold and calculating Alight was. After he had just murdered a man, he goes to a diner and eats a cheeseburger as if nothing happened. Truly cold as ice Alight was. The seventh story, which proves Alight's viciousness, was when he personally threatened Vito Guzzo, a tough wise guy in the Colombo family. Alight and Gotti Jr., had an operation where they would control all the nightclub bouncers throughout New York City. No bouncer would be able to get a job in a club unless they went through A-Light. A-Light and Gotti Jr. would set bouncers up in clubs throughout New York City and Long Island and in exchange take large cuts off their profits. Before long, nearly all the bouncers in New York were in A-Light's pocket. However, Vito Guzzo refused to allow Alight's bouncers in his club, known as Stingers. So in response, Alight ordered all the bouncers to not show up for work at Guzzo's club. Nevertheless, once Alight got word that the bouncers were indeed working in Guzzo's club, Alight went straight over there to set them straight. To quote Gotti's rules once again, Alight, brandishing a thirty-two caliber pistol, walked up to a bouncer who was standing at the door and said, Didn't you get the word not to come to work today? Before the bouncer could reply, Alight shot him in the leg. Three other bouncers came running out of the club. Alight shot all three. Then he walked into Stingers looking for Guzzo. They told me he had gone out the back, Alight said, who turned and walked out of the club. On the way out, he grabbed the manager by the hair, held the gun to his head, and said, the next time I'm coming back, I'm going to shoot you and Guzzo in the head. Again, Alight was truly crazy. He goes and takes on three bouncers at once. You show me one wise guy who has ever done anything like that. Name me one. Another story which shows just how crazy John Alight was, was when he went to collect a debt Gotti Jr. was owed by a guy named Steve Newell. To quote Gotti's rules, Alight was going to collect. Newell balked at paying, so I shot him, Alight said. I saw him walking along Cross Bay Boulevard. I got out of my car and shot him in the butt. 
When he went down, I kicked him and punched him. Again, this just shows the the utter brutality of A-Light. It shows just how dangerous he was, that he could do something like this in broad daylight in the middle of the street. Everyone feared A-Light. This is how he was able to commit these crimes in broad daylight because nobody dared defy him. Nobody dared go near him. Perhaps the most important story that exemplifies A-Light's toughness was when he threatened to kill Tommy Karate Patera to his face. He threatened to kill him right to his face. Tommy Karate was considered one of the most brutal gangsters throughout the 1980s in New York. Nobody would mess with him. The only one who had the balls to mess with him was none other than John A. Light. The conflict began when A. Light robbed drug dealer Dennis Harrigan of over $120,000. After taking the money, A. Light gave 60000 of the score to his close friend Greg Ryder. However, it was later revealed that Dennis Harrigan was one of Tommy Karate's primary drug dealers, and when he learned of Ryder and A. Light's involvement in the heist, Patera allegedly set out to kill both Ryder and a Greg Ryder was the son of Mark Ryder, a major drug trafficker for the Gambino family, who had recently been sentenced to 80 years in prison. Although Ryder and a belonged to the Gambino family, that did not stop Patera from trying to kill them. After Patera murdered Ryder, he then set his sights on a and allegedly contracted the Mexican Mafia, who Patera had contacts with, to kill a at his home. Patera did not want to go after a himself, and instead hired Hitman to kill him. That is clear evidence of how fearful Patera was of a that he was so afraid of the consequences if he went after a on his own. When the hit squad opened fire on a a single-handedly took down that hit squad, wounding two of them. To quote from Gotti's rules, he grabbed an Uzi machine gun and a revolver and in the dark began stalking those who were stalking him, shooting as he ran, rolling in the brush for cover and coming up firing again. He engaged in a brief firefight, a said. He is certain that he hit two of the intruders before they ran from the property. So a took on three trained hitmen all by himself. You show me one wise guy who could take on three trained hitmen all at once. Only a could accomplish something like that. But wait, it gets better. After the shootout, Patera demanded a sit-down with a and Gotti to settle the conflict, and Gotti ended up squashing the dispute between the two. But when a met Patera out in the parking lot following the sit-down, a personally assured Patera that he was going to kill him. To quote Gotti's rules, outside the club, as they walked to their cars, a said he told Patera nothing had changed. What do you mean? Patera asked. The man said it was settled. Nothing settled, a said. I'm still gonna kill you. Greg Ryder was one of a best friends, and nothing was going to stop him from killing Patera and avenging his friend's death. However, Patera was arrested and jailed shortly after the meeting, so a never had the chance to make good on his threat. A light was fearless. Nobody would ever threaten Tommy Karate, let alone to his face. But A light did. Doing that took unbelievable balls. That is just another of many examples of how dangerous John A light was. A light was not afraid of anyone. If his threatening of Tommy Karate does not convince you of that, let me tell you another story of when A light beat and battered Louis Oricchio in prison. While serving time in Ferriton Prison, a got word from his friend Charles Carniglia that Auricchio was abusing a kid by the name of Bobby Brooks and that a needed to look out for Brooks. Louis Auricchio was a big-time Genovese wise guy who was in prison for murdering Genovese soldier John DeGilio. Many people knew that Auricchio was a serious killer and very feared. He was not someone to be messed with. But a took him on face to face. To quote from Gotti's rules again, I told him, get out of the line. 
He wouldn't do it. He said, I'm not going to fight you. I told him he didn't have a choice. I wasn't asking. I was telling him to get out of the line. I stayed out of his reach and then hit him whenever I could. He was a strong kid. He couldn't box. I beat him up pretty bad. Again, that just shows how tough Alight was to take on a Riccio like that. It took a lot of courage. Another story that proves how tough Alight was was when he personally schooled Gene Gotti on Cosa Nostra rules. As Gene Gotti, while in prison, was talking mafia business to outsiders and abusing Joe Gambino, a captain in the family, Alight stepped in and warned Gotti that this was against the rules. To quote from Gotti's rules, Alight slapped Gene Gotti around and told him to back off. The move helped Joe Gambino, who thanked Alight. The mob capo later gave him a gold chain with a religious medal on it. So to conclude, these are just a few stories out of dozens that prove just how tough and dangerous John A. Light was. I must tell you, I've read about a lot of wise guys, and very few come close to just how tough A. Light was. He was a very brutal gangster.